Welcome to the Jaffa programming tutorials. Um, what we were looking at is uh, writing um, strings to a file, and what we're going to, what we're going to look at in this tutorial is writing um, strings and things like that to a file. And so this is how we've done the reader. Remember, it's a stream and it's a reader in Jaffa. And the reader is characters and strings and paragraphs, etc. Um, it's what you see. It's not an ASCII code. Is it if you put uh, the letter T um, um, to a file, it, it not it won't be the ASCII code. The bytes it will be the letter the letter T. And so what we've done is we've done buffered the reader and we've given it a name. Then we've done new buffered reader. Then inside here we've done new file reader because we're reading a file and we've gave it the path and the file. Now if that file does not exist then it throws an error. But we know it exists because we created it. And it's the same thing you do for a writer. A reader, you've got a reader which reads information and you've got a writer. So it's the same. It's the same as with the bytes. You've got um, you've got a output stream and an input stream. But this is not stream. This is reader and writer. And so what that means is that we can use the exact same way to write information to a file, and the exact same way to withdraw information from a file by reading it. But the, the methods are different in writer than it is in reader. You can see read line. Well, this is a append write new line character. It gives you a new line. And so what we've done is we've created a buffered writer, given it a name. You notice it was buffered reader and new buffered writer and new buffered write reader. And then it's new inside these is the same because it's a file class but it's file writer and then it's file reader so it's the exact same only difference is one's a reader and one's a writer and it's the same with a buffer and so the methods that we've called this one WR and we called that one FR and so the, the methods we access is different that one is read line to read the whole line and so what we're going to do is we're going to comment this out because we're not going to use it, we're just going to read and write information into it into the file. We know the file exists, I've run the program and that's what we put into it. And so if we run the program, what we're doing is the first time we're going to write YouTube tutorials. Then we're going to append onto that a space. And then we're going to append onto that as hi there all. And then we're going to do two new lines and then we're going to append we're going to append or we could just write after that we could programming tutorials and so if we run a program you see that there's no errors if we go to the file we've got to accept the changes and that's the change youtube tutorials hi that's the space we appended and that's the hi there all we appended one line, two lines, and appended it onto the second line in programming tutorials. And if I come back here and if I change this to right, oh, okay, right, wrong. Now, instead of appending it onto this line here, it's going to take the new line and, and write it, write um, program tutorials onto it. So it should be an extra line. And if we go to the file, right, it's not an extra line, I thought it would be. It's just the same as append, right? Um, but append is, if we didn't do a new line and we append something onto here, that's what we will get um, appended onto it. But if we write um, onto this line, the light will just light over what's already on this line. And we'll, we'll test that to see if that's right. And we'll t do another one of these. Control C. And 
friend who, who, who caught Frog and don't think it's a word. And then we go to the file. And you can see it's appended. So what I was saying was wrong. It's appended. It says writing is just the same as appending. We're not overwriting it. So you can use append and write. And what we'll do is in between this we'll put two new lines. And that will separate those two arguments, those two um, strings. And you can see it's not appended anymore. It's been, it's been two new lines. A new line here one, and a new line here is two, and that's why it's only one line between it, because the text takes up the second line. And so with this, this is just like the system print. Oh, though you're writing to file where you can control you can control where the text goes onto that file and if you if you do it in ordered fashion you can take it off in the same ordered fashion and so that's this is when your 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 files become useful it just becomes an extended piece of memory and um, you're storing things on your hard drive you can access anytime you want it can be like scores for games and different things like that it can be the user's name the highest score name um, and their score and, and you read it you'll say well the first string is the person's name and the second string is the highest score and you just first you, you'll, you'll, you'll copy um, you'll read off the name and then you'll read off the highest score and when someone gets a score um, it's higher you'll test to see if the highest score is less than the new score and if it is then you'll, you'll, you'll write the new person is the highest score and you'll put that the first person is second place, third place, fourth place, etc. And so you can use files for anything. And so so that's that's a tutorial on writing strings to files. And it's um, using not the reader but the writer. Um, and it's buffered writer and file writer. And so to access the files. And so, and again, you have to use a try and catch um, in case something goes wrong. Anything can go wrong, your whole program would crash. And so what it is, I say, you've got this code, and somebody says, well, well, we can't use that because if an error happens, the whole program's going to crash, and, and that's no good for the customers. And somebody says, oh, just try it. Just go and try it. And say, no, we can't do that. Um, because you no, know, the chances of breaking down and the, the program's no good to the to user, and so you're limited in the sort of things you can do with your program because you no, know, an error can happen, but you've got to you've got to you know like be prepared for it um, to overcome it. And so someone says, "Oh, it's all right, do it, do it." Then we can catch it, and then we can change the code. And so that's what they do is they put the code in. That's, that this there could be a problem if it could throw an error. For example, if the file wasn't there, then it would be trying to read a file that doesn't exist, then it would throw an error, the whole program would crash. So they put it, we, kn we know that they put a group of code inside places. These two, that's the start place up there, and this is the stop place up here. That's all a group of code. This is put inside places with the try keyword. So it's going to try anything in here and if an error happens anywhere in here it stops instead of crashing the whole program it jumps to the catch statement and in the catch statement we said IO exception that's the kind of exception it's going to be thrown and we could call this anything we could call this normally it's called E you can, because you can call it what you want E and E is going to be passed to here and this code is going to be executed now we can actually print out E to find out what E is, right? And if anything goes wrong here, this is going to be executed, and we can put code down and say, well, well, no file. We'll tell them it's no file found, and we'll open up and create a new file because someone's deleted something, and we can do that all here. Then we move forward in the, the program and go and do the things we're supposed to do. Now I'm going to show you this working because if I change. Any, if I put a T in there, then that's the wrong path. It's going to throw an error. 
And so what what's going to happen? Sorry, file not found, and found Jaffa IO file not found exception. And it tells you this is what it was looking for, and that T strong we know that the system cannot find the path specified. This is because we deliberately messed it up. But what happened there is the catch caught it, and that's what was passed to the E, and that's what we put in here. So when I run it again. That's E. This is what's passed to E. This part here. This is what we put in the program to print out. And all the rest of it is E. And we could have called it what we want. We could have called it ET. Run the program. It would be the exact same. Right. So that's catch. And so we can try things that may throw an error, but we can put in code to, if we catch. We'll catch that error and we'll do this because this certain thing's not working. And you can have many different catches from one time. So you can say the file might not be right, the file might be like um, like protected and um, private and the attributes don't give you access to it. So you'll have another catch to overcome this. And so we're going to go into try and catch, but not now, but just explain it now just as we're using it. And so so that's us done the the writer for files, file writer and buffered writer. So again, thank you for your time.